there's a very, to me, very interesting relationship between working on books and working in these hospital situations because where you're working with a writer, you're adapting to their approach to things so that I draw in the way that I draw and I know now that it's recognisable and that kind of thing, but at the same time you can adapt it to particular situations. So in a sense the text of that book is your brief. When you go into a hospital situation, nobody's giving you a brief. Um, there may be people there who w could try to, but you've got to come up with a kind of metaphorical answer. They got in touch with me and said, we're refurbishing the elderly patients' residential ward. And we wondered if you could do some pictures specifically for that. I thought I was qualified because um, uh, I thought, you know, I was the same age more or less as the people in the hospital, so I was, I was allowed to tease them. The great things about drawing is that you've got in a sense, you've got metaphor to hand immediately. You don't, you're not committed to drawing exactly what is in front of you. You can make it up. And so I put these people in trees, really. And they're, they're, I mean, it just happened that the first drawing I was starting from, one existed already, had this elderly lady swinging from one branch of a tree to another. And that sort of gave me the answer. So, oh, yeah, they're going to be in trees. There was a woman in the, with the first set of... Kershaw pictures said, um, oh, she said, oh, no, they encourage us to do all the sort of things we're not supposed to do. They're wonderful. <laughs> well, and, well, there are no trees, trees to climb there, but, but, but I mean, that is the spirit of them in a way, is that um, mentally you, you can, I mean, there are agilities which you, which you retain. The idea of, of circus was so that in a sense you, that, you know, what I like about them is there's sort of bits of meaning hanging around somewhere or other so that if you are in this mental health centre, you could think of it was a kind of a circus really, you know, but the other thing about it is that they can still, they can still do things. They're not incapacitated. They're actually rather good. They're modified versions of, uh, of what you might do. So the, the slack wire is not very high but the lady still has a certain amount of dignity on it, you know, kind of thing. And, and, so, and uh, so there's that sort of activity going on. So that's, the, that's where the circus set came from. The, the wonderful thing about the Angers pictures was that they move on to a kind of celebration. They're not, they're, but, you know, I mean, you, you may not be feeling very well when you look at them, because you're in the, the you know, advanced stages of labour, but at the same time, it is a sort of celebration of what is going to happen and a reassurance that it is going to happen. Um, and the, the exchange of look between the mother and the child is the important thing, one of the important things about them. I, when I started drawing them, I didn't, in a sense, I didn't know that. I mean, I think what you do if you're doing what I call illustration or some kind, this kind of narrative art, is that you, you imagine yourself in that situation so that you produce things that you've not, you, you don't think, ah, oh, I must have the mother looking at the child and so on. It comes into, you act the situation. And um, it, there was a memorable moment when the administrator of Angers Hospital said, and of course there is one thing very important, and I thought he was going to say, something about the financial structure of the thing. And he said, he said, there's one thing very important, and that is the exchange of look between the mother and the child. And it was at that point that I knew that we were, you know, it was a project that we were all together in, so to speak. I was impressed with how determined the staff of the hospital were to have the pictures everywhere, so that the main pictures occur in the delivery rooms. So, you know, the, the mother giving birth, has got a picture to look at, she wants to. Um, but they also have them in the room which is devoted to dealing with interrupted pregnancies and also in the room where parents come and relations come to see a child who has not survived. And 
uh, so that I think they acknowledged that, you know, the risk involved, so to speak. Uh, you don't swim about underwater, but uh, again, like the elderly people swinging from branch to branch, it's a kind of parallel world, really. Uh, they are real, but the world that they're in is not real. It's, that's just a, a world of feeling. The Eating Disorders Unit, having talked to them, I mean, they are often very intelligent, very sensitive, perhaps highly strung, very achieving and, and, and scrupulous in, in, in certain ways. And so, in the nicest possible way, I was attempting to undermine that to some extent. And it seemed to me that is the one set of pictures which has a different answer. All the others are a kind of metaphor. Um, planet Zog, you, you're on an alien planet, being on an alien planet is like being in that alien situation in hospital, and so you, you, you play that. These people, I thought, didn't need that. What they wanted was something slightly scruffy, slightly ordinary, slightly um, relaxing, almost, in a sense, and ordinary human situations in which... And so the, there's food in there, but... You're feeding the birds or something, you know. It's it's it, it's it's not propaganda, and at the same time, it isn't eradicated. It's in there on the side, or you may be peeling an apple for somebody else. You're doing something which which is okay, I don't think. And there's a little bit. There are a few little things about self-image, and if you were painting yourself, what would you look like? Or what's it like having your photograph taken? There are those issues are in there, but not. In any, not in any spirit of crisis at all, just they're just around. There's a very large picture in, in Planet Zog, a, which is a banner actually, you know, it's about 15 feet long, where the room where the children wait for their appointments to go and see the consultant. It's got sort of balmy trees in it, with, with striped and spotted and strange flowers on it, uh, which means that it makes a kind of overall pattern. It, it, it flattens it, but it means that everything that's happening, whether it's happening at the top or happening at the bottom, has the same importance. Mm -hmm. So you can you can browse, you can graze across the surface, and in, in a sense, I suppose, in a way, well, this, this is getting above my station, but I mean, it, it's it's the way medieval tapestries work very often. I mean, they, you know, everything is kind of the perspective doesn't quite work, but ev ev things are all the same distance from you, so that they're it's, again, it's different from a book. You're not working up to a climax and then moving away from it. Everything is presented there equal for you to, you know, you can try a little bit of this and then look at that and see if that's tasty or not. And, and so there, there's an assortment of things. When I started drawing, I could only draw with a very sharp little um, pen nib on typing paper, which is probably what was available to me. And I spent a lot of time drawing with a Waverley nib, which is an old writing nib, which you just dip into a bottle of ink. And that gives you a sort of scratchy quality. And so that when you are drawing the gesture or the forms, you can actually feel it happening. Um, and as I've gone on, I found more things to draw with. You could draw with anything, actually, but it's a question of finding what's an appropriate thing. And when I came to draw naked mothers and babies, I used reed pens, you know, which are just reeds cut as, 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 as pens, because they kind of give the quality of flesh rather than the quality of material of clothes. The other thing that's quite nice about them is that they're tricky. Uh, so you can't absolutely guarantee what's going to happen. You just have to go for it think hard about anatomy while you're... I mean, not anatomy, but the way bodies move about and arrange themselves. Um, so that they have that sort of... They have a kind of smoothness about it. And then the eating disorder ones, they're actually drawn with, um, with quills. And the nice thing about quills is they're also a bit unreliable. They're slightly scruffy in the way that they... You know, they're not tidy lines. Um, and they're a little bit uh, uncontrollable. All these pictures are done as gicle prints. And that, that is their digital prints, which um, are 
fantastically faithful. They're like facsimiles of the original. And they, if you have one of the same size as the original, it's almost indistinguishable. It's like a forgery, really. <laughs> I mean, I can call it illustration because at one time, uh, if you were um, illustrating a chapel in the 15th century, you didn't call it illustration. It was what artists did, you know. You told the story of St. Whoever it was, and uh, perhaps you put in a picture of the person who was paying to have it done, and that sort of thing. So, in a sense, you know, I, I can't help thinking about that a little bit when you do a complete set of pictures for a hospital situation. Um, it's kind of a, a cheerful, secular version of something like that. I try and resist people talking about, um, which they sometimes want to, about therapeutic effects. They may have, you know, but uh, we don't know that, and it's quite hard to quantify it. In a sense, it's like acting. You imagine yourself into that situation. It, it's not. It's not about. It's not much about the surroundings. It's not much about the, the scenery, the situation. It's about the people in that situation, and you just try and imagine that you are. It's not that I particularly identify with children in children's books. You just imagine you are that person, and you or you imagine the dog, or you imagine that you're granny or whatever it is and and make those sort of gestures and it was I mean I was very um, touched because somebody in, in, on the start in Angers said to me at one point how did you know that you're not a woman you're not a mother you're not even a parent you know kind of thing and you don't know you it, it's something that is what's interesting about drawing I think is that you act the drawing and you probably find things that you don't know you know the way that people react, the way they, people, they react to each other and that sort of thing.